we are in East Diamond Islet, 350 miles off the coast of Australia and the Pacific. But it's not really that remote. Our lives are integrally connected to this environment and we share so much that with these birds and animals here we can't possibly imagine. In the same way as we're connected through friends and family to the six billion people on Earth, so we're only several degrees separated from the animals and birds we see here. As they go about their daily lives, they're part of an ocean that feeds us, provides our weather, and with a sense of vitality, we yearn to immerse ourselves in it. Life on Earth is completely dependent on our oceans. They drive our climate and weather, produce the oxygen we breathe, and absorb the carbon dioxide we pump into our atmosphere daily. Increasing carbon dioxide and temperature may cause the oceans of our blue planet to turn green as algae begins to dominate the ecosystem. On the way here we saw evidence of how this may have already started to happen on coral reefs. These are all natural processes, but are we pushing them past a point of no return? We've just uh, did a snorkel out here on the uh, outer barrier reef, sort of Swains area, and you can definitely see that there was uh, major cyclone damage last year. It's almost like it's been sandblasted and now there's a little uh, surface algae growing, but it's, a, it's almost a case study example of how you lose biodiversity when you lose the coral because there was only one species of butterfly fish and a, a few grazers, a few algae eaters, but uh, definitely nothing like uh, the normal barrier reef. If we continue to recklessly modify the land and air, our living, breathing oceans will soon struggle to protect us against the effects of climate change. In the next episode, we'll reveal the first of our findings of the island communities of Lihu Reef, what impacts we're having, and the importance of these places for a healthy, functioning ocean. <laughs>